This is part 8 of the hands-on big data workshop screencast version continuing. This is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University. And so in this section we're going to talk about some of the other uh, cloud environments and other service providers for um, for the Hadoop ecosystem. And the primary thing that I'm going to demo for you is the Microsoft Azure cloud service. Now, um, you can go to portal.azure.com and I'll just open that up in a window here. And the first time you go there, you instead of just signing in, you want to go through the steps to create an account. Uh, now, I'm already um, recognized on this system and it'll ask me to sign in. and it's logged it's remembered me on my system and logged me in so the microsoft azure uh, desktop metaphor is this uh, tiles similar to windows 8 um, they will display differently on a windows system i find the tiles are uh, not very uh, flexible in terms of the way they display as you can see on my system um, I like to override a lot of settings and, and uh, do the fonts and font sizes my own way. Um, I also like to be in control of my browser and control what scripts and redirects are going on. You're gonna, if you are like me and do those things, you're going to have to turn all that off and accept a lot of, of things so that Azure can bounce you back and forth between a bunch of different servers and run a lot of weird scripts. Uh, I did find their methodology a bit intrusive, the way that it operates. But once you've got it set up, uh, you're going to have um, this kind of experience. And if you're running it on a default Windows installation, you're not going to notice any of those issues because um, it plays well with Windows. So the primary thing that we're going to demonstrate on the Azure cloud. So again, Azure is Microsoft's version of a web services cloud. There are lots of things up here where we can start and stop uh, servers. We can access different services. Uh, but I'm going to use it just for one main thing, which is to demonstrate Hortonworks in the cloud. Now, we're going to I'm going to launch the application and let it spin up for a while. And while it's spinning up, I'm going to talk more about what is Hortonworks uh, and what is Cloudera and these other uh, providers of services. So what I want to do, uh, the easiest way to get to this is to go to the marketplace, that's like the App Store, and just search it for Hortonworks. And you want the Hortonworks sandbox. So um, I forgot to mention at the beginning that Azure provides a one-month free trial, which is quite nice. Um, lets you access, play around with all the services, and use up to $200 of credit for, you know, your usage fees. So, um, lets you experiment, play around with the service, um, and you can install any of these, you know, you can explore in other areas on the App Store. But we want to get the Hortonworks Sandbox. Uh, I'm going to click on it, and there's a description, and down at the bottom there's a button to actually create an instance of this. So I have to uh, name the host, which I'll just call it YouTube. YouTube. Um, I'm not really worried about. I'm not going to change the. Well, let's let's give it a an easy password. Whatever you like that you can remember. Um, so that we can get in with a password if we need to uh, accept all these other defaults, whatever it gives you, the free trial, and click Create. And it's going to ask you to, quote, buy, unquote, the, um, the service. Because we're on the free trial period, uh, this is not going to cost anything to load for us. So we're essentially, we're just accepting the usage terms by clicking Buy. And now you'll see in our 
window we now have a new tile that says it's creating. So that is our status monitor that's showing us that the this particular Azure instance is spinning up and while that's running that'll take a few minutes I'll, I'll go back to the slides and talk about other things. Okay so our primary cloud services there you know there are other things out there but you know this is an area that's led by some of the big internet companies uh, so Microsoft has its offering Google also has cloud services um, I've given you a link here to some instructions on building Google in the Google Cloud building a Hortonworks version of Hadoop um, in setting up this workshop you know I didn't have time to uh, experiment with every service so I have not tried this out myself but um, I assume that if you work through the details you'll be able to do similar things on the Google Cloud if that is your uh, preference and Google has guides for using Hadoop on what they call the Google Compute Engine similar to the um, Amazon Elastic Compute. So I find, I mean, Amazon's been around longer, more people have used it, therefore more instructions and guides are available out there. Uh, so if you're new to this, it may be a little easier to get started on Amazon as we did in the workshop. Um, but you may see something you like in these services or you're just more familiar with these. You can, you can do the same thing on Microsoft or Google. And Microsoft uh, sort of naturally uh, also has uh, Microsoft server options. So if you want to run things on Microsoft server instead of Linux, um, Azure is clearly going to be a good bet for that because they offer they do offer Linux options but they offer a lot of Microsoft server options. Okay so let me talk about the providers in the Hadoop space. When we launched our Amazon cluster we saw uh, we could set it up with the Amazon version of the software or MapR and MapR is one of these providers I'm not highlighting them in the slides because they're more of a big enterprise level provider uh, two of the leading providers that produce a lot of tutorials and guides and helpful information uh, and versions of software that you can just download and use are Cloudera and Hortonworks so what do these companies do? We've seen that the software itself is open source and if you're ready to get your hands dirty and dig into all the instructions you can go in and set everything up yourself. However, you have to know a lot to do that and you have to spend a lot of time uh, configuring things. So there's a role for companies to, to provide pre-built environments that solve your problems uh, and also those companies contribute a lot to the development of new features. Uh, so Cloudera uh, was founded by a lot of people involved with the original development of Hadoop. They go back to 2009. Uh, they distribute a version called CDH and it's the Cloudera distribution with Hadoop. So they, they package you know just the, the Hadoop software itself with a number of other projects that are all uh, synced up so that they work together in a stack of applications and they contribute a lot to Apache projects including HBase is one that's often mentioned in connection with them. Uh, the site demo.gethue.com is actually associated with with Cloudera and Hue is one of the as we've seen the management interfaces for Hadoop. You can click the link uh, in the slides and get a more um, customized trial and there, there's several options on uh, things you can download to your own system things that you can run on a virtual machine um, and Cloudera also has integration with other data analytics software like Tableau Tableau I'm at least familiar with Zoom Data and Trifacta I have only heard the names um, but you know these will allow you to take your big data and actually run other analytics on top of it 
in an integrated environment. So this is an example of the value added that Cloudera provides. And the get um, the, the hue environment uh, at the demo site for hue is again an example of this where you can just get in instantly and see how it works. Um, you can also download a virtual machine. I think I will pull up a virtual machine a little bit later as well. So this is Cloudera. The site itself has, if you look at their training, um, they have courses and things that you have to pay for, but there are also free videos. There's some videos that you can get if you just you know sign up with them. And because they're a center of expertise in this area, you know they have a lot of good information. Oh, okay, so that's Cloudera. Uh, probably the second sort of large provider in this era, in this space is Hortonworks. So Hortonworks came a little bit later to the party in 2011, uh, but they, a large group of the Yahoo engineers who were working on Hadoop left to form Hortonworks. Uh, just like Cloudera, they, they package up a stack that is then downloadable. Uh, if you go to their site and you look around, um, you look at their get started you know you can download different versions there you know there are versions with support there are versions um, that are designed for you know self install and do it yourself um, lots of different versions and in the Hortonworks case uh, I'll show you what it looks like when you're running uh, in a virtual machine as well but you can if you don't have a virtual machine environment on your own computer, this is exactly what we're going to get when we are in the uh, Microsoft environment. Okay, so now I'm going back, after having talked about those companies for a little bit, go back into Azure. We can see that our YouTube uh, server that we spun up is now running. Uh, once again, my screen um, I like to enlarge the fonts on my screen and um, these sort of predefined fields uh, tends to cut things off so I apologize about this uh, this view. So here's my uh, virtual machine. I've got some status on it and I've also got a web address. So my web address I can use to access the management interface. Uh, so it's my name that I that I provided. Uh, if I could just pull that out of here. This is a little hard to copy and paste from. But I'll try to get some of it at least. And open this up in another window. Cloudapp.net I think I got that right. Let me just make sure. Cloudapp.net. So my web address uh, is provided uh, there in the Azure interface, and I can try to connect. It's not going to let me connect to um, the web, you know, the default web ports. But if I go to port 8000, um, I should be able to see. Uh, my management interface. This is looks running a little sluggishly here. Here we go. All right. So on the Hortonworks sandbox, we have a few different places that we can go to look at the system. Um, Eight thousand is sort of the base, and this may remind you a little bit of Hue, but it has a little bit of a different uh, format. This is the the management interface developed by Hortonworks for their software. We have, uh, you know, a hive editor, a pig editor environment that we can go to. Uh, we also have some tools to watch running jobs. We have an Uzi editor. If you remember, we talked about Uzi as the uh, job scheduler, and we can see what's running and what has completed and what has failed. Um, and we have a, a couple of other things. So we can administer users and their um, permissions on the, the system. Uh, so this, again, is a, is a management interface that's designed to help you do many of these things. Now, the other thing that I want to do 
um, I'll just go back to the home page is I want to enable Ambari. Now Ambari, uh, we, we saw it on one of the slides and we just said it is a management interface. I want to sh show you what that looks like in action because Ambari is, is relatively popular um, and we'll see once it starts up. So I clicked enable to start it up and I can now access the Ambari service runs um, I believe on port 8080. Let's try that again. No. We're we not enabled yet. Eighty. So I blanked on, yeah, by default, Ambari uses port 8080. So let's just make sure that uh, we've given this enough time to spin up. Here we go. Um, it was just taking a little bit of time to actually get initialized. That was the problem. Um, so by visiting port 8080 on the server, we can access the Ambari interface. Um, the default sign-in is admin admin here. You can change that, uh, but the first time it starts up, you can log in with admin admin. And now we get a look at Ambari in action. So Ambari has a management uh, dashboard with quick views of things like the memory usage and the load on the system. So again, when you're actually managing a whole bunch of, of machines, uh, you don't have time to go in and you know look at each one by logging into it and, and looking around on the command line. You want to have these tools that will let you um, see where the problems are, see where the capacity is, is bottlenecked. Um, and so our dashboard lets us take a look at that. And on the left hand side we have tools for managing each of these applications. Uh, so we have familiar ones like Hive. Um, we can see if our Hive installation is running okay. We can, and I, I, again I'm not really going to go into uh, any more detail than this. I'm just browsing around so that you can see the environment. And we have other things like Zookeeper. Uh, we mentioned Zookeeper in the slides, but this has uh, monitoring management interface to Zookeeper. We mentioned Ganglia. Uh, Ganglia is running, and if we go to the dashboard, uh, some of these services here are provided by um, the Ganglia service information. Uh, we can look at our hosts. Uh, we're just running a single instance right now, the Sandbox instance but this screen would show you know multiple hosts if we have those configured and essentially gives you um, a somewhat more full featured view of your system than our other management interfaces so this is really for uh, you know the server administration the people the sysadmins who are monitoring the health and performance of your Hadoop cluster and Bari does a lot for that um, but what we've also illustrated with this is how to spin up a quick instance on the Microsoft Azure site and a place where we can get in and via the 8000 port. So 8080 lets us monitor via Ambari, but the 8000 port lets us directly get into some of our editors like the pig editor and you know run pig scripts against our data things like that and that's pretty much all I wanted to show I am going to show you a virtual machine version of the same thing um, I have on my computer and again I'm not really going to um, talk about how to set up a virtual machine that's a whole separate topic 
that many of you may be familiar with and many of you may not be, but you can find other uh, instructions about that. I have VirtualBox running on my system. Uh, that's also available for other operating systems. And I have downloaded from the Hortonworks site the version of the Hortonworks sandbox for VirtualBox. Uh, that's a big download, takes a while to download. You need uh, at least four megabytes of extra spare memory uh, to um, you know to run this and I'm just gonna click start uh, so start and we get a status window that's gonna show us the process of it's actually booting up a new system right now it's been a few messages this is just uh, the advantage of a virtual machine is it's running on your own system once you've downloaded that environment you're not dependent on an internet connection you're not paying any usage fees so if you have the space to do that and the inclination to install a virtual machine environment um, this also can be a really good way to experiment and you'll see here that it doesn't take too long to spin up it'll take another um, 60 seconds or so I hope and the result will be exactly the same kind of uh, interface to uh, a, a sandbox version of the Hortonworks Hadoop environment. Um, this gives you a little bit more flavor of if you were actually running it on a on your own installed system. All the services that need to start, everything, uh, all the icons represented here in the management interface are all separate programs and services running that have been brought together. So it, it again is um, is a, a complicated enterprise to uh, have the expertise to configure all those different parts if you wanted to make any changes to these defaults. And I'm just going to let that go for a second. While that is, oh, here we go, now we're starting the sandbox. bear with me for just a moment and you'll get the um, the feel of exactly how long this takes which is not that long but maybe for some viewers are now wishing that it would complete a little bit faster in our virtual machine environment we have icons uh, as you can see these at the bottom of the uh, menu area showing you know flashing disk activity that's our sign that the virtual machine is working alright so now uh, the virtual machine is ac accessible from the local hosts browser so as you can see here we want to go to 127.0.0.1 and the 8888 port so let's do that 8888 and here we go welcome to the Hortonworks sandbox uh, we could also SSH in we, so we could get some command line experience uh, we've got some nice links to tutorials so we've got you know uh, just like Cloudera Hortonworks has a nice package of resources to help you learn this environment um, all the while you know keeping you from diving into the into the deep end of the water you've got a dive metaphor here um, by giving you a controlled environment where everything already sort of works. Uh, so just like our Azure service, we can go to the 8000 interface and the default um, username and password. Here's where uh, you do need to use that Hue 1111 default username and password. And you can see um, this is pretty much identical to what we are running on the Azure cloud instance uh, same environment same ability to go to the 8080 port and have a look at Ambari
and it's it's the same sandbox environment um, but this time running on my virtual machine because it's running on the virtual machine it's actually going to be slightly more responsive in this environment um, I don't have to go out and call something on the internet to, to um, request new information and as you can see when I when I go into the services I can take a look at any of these services that are running um, I can look at my HDFS file system and get information about that how much um, memory is allocated how much disk usage is going on and I can anything that I see as a link I can usually click there and get even more detail I can drill down and get more detail about started and starting and stop services um, there's another uh, Hadoop ecosystem project called Kafka and I looked at that name and I said I'm not going to go there I might get uh, stuck in indefinitely continued ambiguous processes so uh, I don't even want to know what Kafka does there, there are enough packages here to experiment with that don't need to deal with with Kafka at this point alright so now we've seen the virtual machine uh, we can just go ahead and uh, stop the virtual machine if we want to kill this process we go to our virtual box manager and we can say file um, exit and it's just gonna shut down the machine um, that's probably the quickest way to just shut things down we don't need to save anything so we're just gonna kill it like this um, once we we do that I'm sorry we, we should actually go to the the monitoring window also and close the machine that's going to shut the machine down so we're going to send it the signal to power off and now our local interfaces should stop working yeah see now the machine is shut down so it can't collect any more data when we try to load reload the page it's unable to connect so our local machine is shut down uh, we are going to go back to the cloud uh, Azure version of the machine and click the shutdown button here to shut down that machine as well we don't want to even though this is a free trial uh, we don't want to waste those resources and potentially get billed for them later when the trial runs out uh, so I'm gonna click shutdown it's going to close that machine and the web links uh, to the the web service if I try to reload these uh, still working still working now it's unable to connect now it's shut down okay so again the the live examples were all from the Hortonworks sandbox you can explore on the Hortonworks site and see some of the other versions of material that they have um, Cloudera and Hortonworks again as I mentioned are the the ones that have a, the most presence in this space but there are many other companies that are providing these these services so um, we already talked about everything on this slide on Ambari uh, which summarizes the ports that let you um, access the different management interfaces and I'm gonna stop here so that the next section we're gonna move away from Hadoop only and start talking about data analytics with R and big data environments that use R in combination with Hadoop data storage um, so that's coming up let me stop it here